Okay, let's talk about overlays. Talos overlays are a new feature in Talos 1.7 and later that allow you to do things that you couldn't do before. See, in Talos 1.6 and anything before 1.7, whenever we wanted to build custom installers for Talos, we had to build entirely new systems. We had to release a new artifact for Talos the operating system that had some new layers of things built into it. And this wasn't really maintainable and it wasn't something that made it easy for you to discover what you were looking for. So in Talos 1.7, we built overlays. How do you customize a Talos installation before the API is available? There's two main ways to do that. Number one is with extensions. Extensions are part of the root file system after an installation. Extensions are SquashFS images that get squashed together so that when you run your root file system, when init starts, all of these files exist and everything is available on the system to either run extra services or have drivers, all of the things that the is needed after the kernel's booted. But what about the stuff before the kernel's booted? Sometimes there's things that have to be there and run before the kernel starts. That's what overlays do. Overlays are customizing the installer of Talos. Extensions are customizing the root file system after installation. So that's the clear distinction between when you would use one versus the other. They might seem like they do the same thing and you might try to use an overlay to modify the root file system. But remember that root file system is read only once we have the squash FS. So extensions are, are doing all that before the kernel init, and that root FS that boots into it is static and it's immutable and you can't do anything to that root file system. But during that installation time, again, you might need to customize something. The main time that we do this customization is with single board computers, things like the Raspberry Pi and other boards that don't have a BIOS or a UEFI. Those are systems that need customization for the installer, not just the root FS. So in this case, I can take a Raspberry Pi and I can customize the installer with the, the U-boot images for the bootloader that the Raspberry Pi needs. Because again, Raspberry Pi doesn't have a BIOS. It doesn't have a UEFI. It doesn't have some way to initialize the hardware. So I need to add U-boot layers with drivers to be able to, to boot from the kernel to the root file system. And I could still customize the root file system with extensions if I wanted to, but I don't have to. Now I can take the generic Talos image and add the overlay for the Raspberry Pi, and I get one image that is generic Talos that lets me boot it on a Raspberry Pi. Let's walk through it and show you how that works so that we can run a cluster on this Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna walk you through three different ways you can get a Talos installer image, and specifically one with the Raspberry Pi overlay, just to show you the ways that it works. This works for any sort of Talos installation media, but I wanted to show you these three options just so you know they exist. The first one is factory.talos.dev and this is where you can download customized Talos installation media that have either extensions or overlays. And so if I scroll through here, I see I have bare metal machine image, a cloud server, something that's gonna be running in a VM somewhere, and a small board computer, the SBCs. And this is what we want, because this is going to specifically have the overlays we want. Um, the other ones don't have overlays right now, but it doesn't mean that it won't happen in the future. So let's go ahead and click next on the small board computers. I'm gonna choose what version of Talos Linux that I want to download, and this is 172. The older versions um, may not have overlays, like I said, uh, you'll be getting a different uh, installer image that's baked in. So Talos 172, click next, and then I can pick which SBC I have, and we have all of the overlays as part of this selection. So some of them need different overlays depending on the drivers and how they're booting. Uh, in this case, I have a Raspberry Pi and, and right now we only support Raspberry Pi 4. Raspberry Pi 4 is kind of the sweet spot for, it has long-term Linux kernel supports uh, and it has enough resources to run the system. A Raspberry Pi 3 maxed out at one gig of memory and you can't do anything with that in a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, Raspberry Pi 5 doesn't yet have kernel support. So as I'm recording this, we only support the Raspberry Pi 4, uh, which has uh, four gigs of RAM or eight gigs of RAM and it enables us to have long-term kernel support and also add these overlays. We'll click next on that. And now we can pick our extensions if we want system extensions. And again, these are usually something after the system is installed, a part of the root file system. This can be drivers, this could be services, could be different run times. All of that stuff falls into system extensions. And I don't need any for this. I'm just gonna use a standard 
Talos installation media, um, but if you want something like this, uh, this is where you would go to get it. We'll click next, and now we can customize uh, kernel arguments and uh, extra overlay arguments. So if you have something you need to configure in the overlay, there might be uh, something you need to set here. And you can see those in the repos where the overlays are. Um, if there is configuration, um, like this config text, is basically what would be in your config text for your Raspberry Pi. Um, some things may not work. Uh, if you have a config text and you want to enable SSH, um, there is no SSH in Talos. So uh, that's not going to work. <laughs> um, but in general, you need a way to possibly customize that for the installer as well. So now we're going to click Next, and this is going to give us the disk image. And in this case, I get a raw XZ, which is what I would flash to my micro SD card. So I can download this image here, and I get, again, this schematic that is a Talos installation uh, with the overlay, and this is no options uh, provided. If I customize this in any way, this uh, schematic would change and be a unique ID for a different use case. So we can download it here. Uh, also, if you're an Omni, uh, using Omni, I can download installation media from here. And this is roughly the same as what I had before as far as uh, I need to pick my Talos version. Let's go with 172. I need to pick my Raspberry Pi model B. I can add extensions here, which I don't need to. I can add kernel arguments. Um, in this case, we don't actually have the um, overlay arguments just yet integrated into Omni, but that's also coming. And then I can download the media. And the main difference here is this installation is going to add connectivity for the machine to connect back to Omni by default. And so all of my installation media have this defaults kernel parameters, which allow me to join this API endpoint, this WireGuard endpoint, and have this join token automatically as part of kernel parameters. So when I download installation media from here, that's what I'm getting inside of Omni. I get that kernel parameters already applied so that the machine is going to boot and automatically join back to this Omni environment. The last way we can download the media is with the Omni command line, and so or Omni control command line. So I can look at Omni control download, and I can say um, press. Well, let, let's go Omni control git installation media. Let's just look at the installation media. So here we can see all of the different. Uh, specs and things we can use. So if I want to say a, a name of something, if I want to give it a profile, those are how we can search for it um, to find which one I need. So if I look for Raspberry Pi, I can see here that I have this overlay of Raspberry Pi generic. It's going to give me the raw image by defaults. It's going to name the file for my Omni because this is Omni control. So I'm uh, automatically going to get those kernel parameters to connect back to it, and I can look for this profile. And that's what I'm going to search for when I try to download it, Raspberry Pi generic. And then I'm also going to specify what Talos version I want. And this, again, it, it calls out to the factory, basically, behind the scenes to generate that image for me. So the schematic that it's going to download is going to have those kernel parameters baked in because Omni Control knows I'm authenticated to my Omni instance, and I'm going to download this image. So let's go ahead and extract the raw image from that uh, XZ that we got. And now we have the actual raw uh, file and we can DD this to an SD card. I always get the DD command wrong, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I get it from our documentation. So inputs is the raw file, output OF, and then conversion F sync is that's what I want, and then BS4M. So let's look at which let's look at which device it is, and it's this SDC. Um, it's a 256, or it's a it's a 128 card. So we're going to go ahead and use SDC as my output device. So sudo dd if of equals dev SDC. All right, so we have F sync is going to make sure that we uh, flush that to the disk without waiting, and then we'll let it write.
All right, the SD card is all ready to go, but before we go ahead and boot this little machine to the best Kubernetes operating system that there is, let's make it look a little better. Um, I just got a little thing in the mail and let's check it out at the bench. All right, that's a lot better now. Um, it's it's not necessary to use Talos overlays, but it's definitely a lot cooler to be able to have a little screen and have this self-contained. So let's go ahead and boot it up and see the process for creating an Omni cluster with a single Pi node. This machine connected back into Omni for me and I can see this machine and I know it's the machine because this is the IP address that I see in my network. I can see that SD card that I'm using um, and I got the Talos version here. So let's go ahead and create a cluster from it. Click on clusters, create a cluster, and we're gonna name this one Pi. We're going to select the version of Talos we want, the version of Kubernetes we want, and then down here we can select that we want it to be a control plane, and this is gonna be a one node cluster. Um, here we can, on this little tiny puzzle piece, we can add system extensions for that installation, but again, I don't need any system ex uh, extensions. You can't add overlays here because the system that booted it, the actual boot media, needs to have the installer customizations. But let's go ahead and configure a patch here by clicking on the gear, and this is going to patch the system with uh, whatever I want in the config. So I'm going to call this one P0 or PI0 um, as a host name. So when it actually does the install, that's what it's going to show up as for a host name. This name will, will go away in the UI install to that media and we'll create our cluster. When we're creating a single node cluster, it does ask us if we want to apply a patch to enable workloads on the node because by default workloads are disabled for control plane nodes. And so for this, we're going to say, yes, we do want that patch to be enabled for us. And we're going to let that go ahead and run and do the full installation. And again, that's going to install Talos to disk so that reboots are persistent and it's going to start installing all of the Kubernetes control plane components and get a cluster up and running. The Raspberry Pi is not particularly fast, even the fours or fives, uh, but we do have a cluster running now. And so uh, we can see here we have our Pi Zero, all the services are ready. But this video wasn't really about Kubernetes or Omni. This was really about Talos overlays and showing you when you would want to use an overlay versus using a system extension. So again, just to reiterate, those overlays are to customize the Talos installer, how it gets put on disk so that uh, while you're writing the files to disk, you can customize things like adding you boots or things that single board computers might need for initializing hardware. All of these system extensions come after the kernel's booted, after we're, we're getting up into init and we need files or services on the disk, that's all for system extensions. So just keep those things in mind. Right now, mostly overlays are just for SBCs and extensions are for drivers and services, uh, but those things might change as more hardware is added and more services and compatibilities added to Telos. Thanks for watching the video and checking it out. And if you have any questions, leave a comment or reach out in our Slack.